Welcome back to Space Busters, the channel that makes you think for yourselves. Firstly, let's take a look at Ripley's explanation of comets, the dirty snowballs of the cosmos. These things are apparently flying aimlessly around the sun, losing copious amounts of their mass as they get closer, only to disappear off into the void until we spot them coming back again after huge time periods. When they do reappear, they're still losing thousands of tons of mass as they get closer to the sun. The huge tails of debris that they leave behind, sometimes hundreds of thousands of miles long, doesn't seem to diminish their size. Maybe they're picking up more mass as they whiz off again into outer space's extreme cold. But what mass? Space is meant to be empty. Maybe they're picking up dark matter. Apparently outer space is crammed full of that stuff. Anyway, enough of that fairy tale. Lamestream science tells us that as the comet has no atmosphere, the solar wind is ripping off vast amounts of ice and debris, which we see as the tail. We, on the other hand, do have an atmosphere, and that's why our stuff doesn't get ripped away by the vicious solar wind. So our fragile atmosphere is the only thing protecting us from the ravages of outer space. Thank God for clouds, gas, <coughs> microscopic particles, air, water droplets, small insects and butterflies for saving us from the destructive forces of the cosmos. How lucky we are. Now let's take a look at the moon. NASA tells us that this celestial body doesn't have an atmosphere. This thing is supposedly whizzing its way around us on the Earth, which in turn is whizzing around the Sun, which in turn is whizzing around the galaxy, which in turn is whizzing towards the Great Attractor, which in turn is whizzing outwards in an ever-expanding universe. All at incredible speeds that are hard to comprehend. So taking all of this into account, we have to come to the conclusion that if you are lucky enough to have an atmosphere, then you're safe and you won't get all your stuff ripped away. Then why, my dear NASA fanboys, why doesn't the extremely fine dust that covers the moon's surface not get ripped away and form a tail just like the comets? The moon is following us on our journey through space at the same speed. It's just as close to the sun as we are. It hasn't got an atmosphere to protect it, so how come all of the dust is still there? Is it because our very own magnetosphere protects us? If that is your answer, then please explain why the gaseous planets of Jupiter and Saturn are still in one piece and don't resemble huge comets in our night sky every single night. Answers on a postcard, please, addressed to Head of Children's Entertainment, NASA, USA. Please share this little video far and wide and enjoy the amusing responses you'll get from the fanboys. <laughs> Space Busters, the channel that makes you think for yourselves.